Thomas M. Dyke is retired. The Congressional Medal of Honor, as you know, is our country's highest military award. During World War II, 57 Navy men achieved this great honor. Of the seven submariners who won Congressional Medals, three did so at the cost of their lives. The story we are about to bring you involves one of these three men. It tells what he did to achieve a sailor's immortality. Brisbane, Australia. On December 31st, 1942, the USS Growler had completed refit after her third patrol and reported readiness for sea. But as far as her crew was concerned, she was only half ready. Oh, come on, Willie. Open up. Look, Gaffney. I'm just chief of the boat. I don't know everything. You on the level? If the skipper's being relieved, they're keeping it awful quiet. Now, where'd you hear it? Uh, some of the guys. Well, when you hear any facts, let me know. Yeah, this might be it. He's too young to be a skipper. Why don't you ask Mr. Davis? Maybe he knows something. Hi, Mr. Davis. Any news for tomorrow's paper? Oh, well, yeah, Gaffney. This is Ensign William, our new communications officer. Gaffney is the editor of our news sheet. Can I have your full name, Mr. William? I got a welcome column for all the newcomers. William W. William. William W. William. Thank you, sir. Mr. Davis? How about the captain? Well, I don't know yet, uh, Gaffney. He's still turned in at the base dispensary. But well, we're still shoving off tomorrow, aren't we? So I hear. Well, if the skipper wasn't going with us, we'd have got a new one by now, wouldn't we? Well, not necessarily. I've heard of him coming aboard two hours before sailing. Looks bad, huh? Why don't you see Mr. Shade? The exec always knows more than the other officers. Well, I don't want to look too anxious. But you're the only one aboard the ship that can get away with it. Anyhow, a newspaper man's supposed to ask questions. Oh, you just want to find out for yourself, that's all. Well, don't you? Commander Howard W. Gilmore of New Orleans, Louisiana, had been skipper of the Growler since her commissioning. In his first six months, Growler had completed three successful patrols, and her score stood at one enemy destroyer, a gunboat, and three cargo vessels sunk. One destroyer and several cargo vessels damaged. Lieutenant Commander Arnold F. Shade of Calistoga, California, was executive officer. He had been assigned to the Growler with Gilmore from the beginning and shared the commanding officer's affection for the boat and crew. Hello, Captain. How you feeling? A little rocky, but I'll live. Got her wiped down? Just about. What the doctor say? He thinks I should stay in port. He didn't insist? Well, I convinced him I had the best executive crew in the fleet. I could go to bed for five days without hurting her efficiency. Good. Gaffney! Thanks, Mr. Shade. Gaffney's working on tomorrow's edition. Having a little headline trouble. Headline trouble? Yeah, it says Happy New Year. If you'd been replaced, he was going to change it. On January 1st, 1943, the Growler departed Brisbane to commence her fourth war patrol. She had been assigned a station off the coast of New Ireland. Her patrol would cover enemy shipping lanes in the Rabaul, the heart of the Japanese buildup against New Guinea and Australia. But it would be nine days before the Growler reached her patrol area, and except for daily drills and training, the crew had little to do but relax. Walk down the middle like this, the kid's got a right to be anxious. Hey, Captain. Glad to see you out of bed, sir. Thanks, William. Feeling a little bit more like myself. <laughs> yes, sir, you're looking better. <laughs> oh, no, my crevice hasn't improved any. Thought I'd have a cup of coffee before I go and wash, sir. Help yourself. Thank you. You play cribbage, William? No, Mr. Shade. Just a little bridge. Pretty hard for four of us to sit down together, William. I suggest you learn a two-band game. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Captain. 
I don't know if Jeff Davis is pulling my leg, but he said to tell you that I'm not a shellback. Said the information was necessary. You know what a shellback is, Bill? <laughs> yes, sir. It's an old sailor who's been around. <laughs> I'm not that yet. <laughs> How'd you get to Australia? By plane. Flew over from Pearl. Well, Davis meant that a man isn't a shellback until he's crossed the equator and has been properly initiated. Oh. You ever crossed the equator on a ship, William? No, sir. You haven't, huh? The royal judge of Neptune's court should hear of this, Captain. I think you're right. I'm sure the royal court will be very interested in making a shellback out of Mr. William here. I'm sure. The royal judge of the court of King Neptune will now make his pronouncement in the case of the lowly polywog, William W. William. Having been accused of, one, making many unnecessary speed changes while officer of the deck, and two, diving frequently to escape aircraft which turned out to be nothing more than His Majesty's bosun birds thereby disturbing the rest and relaxation of many of his shipmates. Said shipmates being trusty shellbacks and loyal subjects of King Neptune. This lowly polywog, William W. William, is hereby sentenced to be rubbed down with graphite grease from main truck to keel and to have his hair anointed with U decompressor oil. If he defers to all shellbacks and agrees to mend his lubberly ways. He will be duly admitted to membership in the realm of King Neptune. Signed, Davy Jones. From the moment Growler entered her patrol area on January 9th, she was in daily contact with enemy shipping. But time and again she was frustrated by last minute course changes and intruding patrol vessels. Anti-submarine vessels were out in force. The Growler's presence was known and the enemy was taking every precaution. Japanese float planes dropped flares searching for the Growler, causing her to submerge and lose sight of anticipated targets. The frustration continued until the morning of January 16th. I can't eat Maru's two patrol boats and a destroyer. Uh huh. Turkey's on the table. Battle stations! Battle station! It looked like a feast for the Growler. The convoy gave no sign of having discovered her presence. Once inside the enemy screen, she was in good firing position at a 2,000 yard range. Mark zero five five range. Mark one eight double O. Hold it. They're zigging. Ship targets. Stand by stern suits. Hang on the bow. Sixty degrees. Down scope. Give me a sonar range. Eleven hundred yards. Let's go. Check bearing and shoot. Bang! Mark! One, one, two. Shoot! Fire seven. Fire eight. Right, full of rudder. Maybe we can line up another one. Gyro angle unfavorable in all previous targets, Captain. We got her. 
Two hits. Bill, you've been waiting for this. What do you make? A superstructure similar to the Brisbane and the roof type. High speed screws closing. It sounds like a destroyer, sir. Check her, Ronnie. We're gonna duck. 200 feet! 200 feet, sir. One out of eight. How is he shooting? Making radical things. Those patrol boats. As long as they're around, it's hard to get in for a shot. Screws passing overhead. Maybe we ought to try knocking off a few. We'll see. One propeller. That's all, sir. No pings. Crowley eluded the pursuing patrol boats and 35 minutes later came up for a look. Enemy planes had joined the search. Down scope. 150 feet. 150 feet. Hey, Bill. Oh, hi, Jeff. Writing a letter? No, uh, Daphne asked me to write an eyewitness report on the sinking this morning. Oh. So, boy, I just came off watch. They got planes out again tonight, dropping flares all over. Real lot to get us, huh? Oh, yeah. He should have heard the sonar pinging from three directions. Busier than flies in the village dump. You know, every time we run into hard luck, I can't help thinking about the skipper's prophecy. It was what? Oh, that's right. Uh, well, it was just something he said when the boat was launched. Well, were you there? No, but Arnie was, and well, he told me all about it. He said the woman who was sponsoring the boat missed with a champagne bottle. She did? And it fell right down to where this, this workman was standing, and he just picked it up and threw it. Broke it on the hull just in time. Skipper said that meant bad luck for the boat, but that she'd always fire bullseyes. Well, that doesn't stand up. We've had good luck on three patrols already. We missed plenty of torpedoes. Yeah, that's right. Boy, I always think about it every time we have a hard time. <laughs> hey, can I read it? Sure. Like it? Swift and true, the grim messenger of death sped to its mark to burst with a shattering roar deep in the bowels of the enemy vessel. When last seen, the stricken ship was a holocaust of flame. English is my best subject. <laughs> uh, hey, look, Bill, do yourself a favor. Yeah? Now, this is fine. I mean, it's great for an English composition, but not for the guys on this boat. Oh, uh, a little too purple, huh? Too green to be more like it. <laughs> well, I can take a hint. <laughs> the Growler's luck continued bad. Contact after contact was lost because of gunfire and depth charge attacks. The new sheet referred to the submarine as the target ship Growler. But she was an elusive target, and Commander Gilmore was determined to make her torpedoes count despite the opposition. What do you get, Arnie? Bearing 085 true. We're 1,500 yards to the track. I can't see a thing up here. We're going to have to make a radar attack. You're going to have to be careful. Sound and radar haven't been consistent. Very well. Come to course 085. All ahead standard. Coming to course 085. All ahead standard. You're heading at him to reduce our silhouette, sir? That's right, Bill. Ship on the starboard beam. Ship on the port bow. They got us in a crossfire. Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! Periscope's useless in this visibility. We'll approach the target by sound. Maybe we can lose those gunboats. Hi, 
High speed screws closing both valves, Captain. If you get down too deep, we'll never catch you. Water feet! Water feet! Forward torpedo room reports gap in a number one ballot tank, man. Rupture. Take charge. I'll be in the torpedo room. Yes, sir. Keeping this down angle, sir? Yeah, for a while, why? Cookie wants an even keel. Says those cakes he's baking are four inches high forward, half an inch to the after end. <laughs> Tell him I'll have a piece of the after end. After dark, the growler surfaced and replaced the damaged gasket. Test dive showed the boat ship shape. Midnight, January 7th. The search for enemy targets continued. It's like last night. Visibility's no more than 2,000 yards. They can't see us, we can't see them. Looks like every gunboat in the Japanese Navy is covering these parts. Well, the word is they're trying to evacuate their troops from Guadalcanal. That's why the pressure. Thank God this is the right time. You know, you're getting the equivalent experience of two ordinary patrols. One thing I'm glad about, holding a skipper like Gilmore. Talk about being nervous in the service those first few days. That's right. He made a shell back out of you, didn't he? <laughs> Bridge, radar contact off starboard bow. 3,500 yards passing opposite course. Very well, Captain to the bridge. Contact off starboard bow, see anything? Nothing, Mr. Davis. Battle station torpedo. Battle stations torpedo. What do you get? One propeller, sir. There's one? That's all, no pings. Must be a gunboat. This freighters are moving unescorted. She's closing fast, sir. About 20 knots. We'll make it on the surface. Patches of low clouds cut in visibility to 100 yards in some places, Cap. I think I see her. A little off port bow. Just a blob off there, but she's moving on opposite course. Right full rudder. Right full rudder. Go below, Jeff. We have firing solution, Captain. Range now 500 yards. Shoot as soon as you're ready. She's turning, Mr. Shade. Closing fast. Captain, we're too close to use torpedoes. Can you see him, Bill? No, sir. Target closing on collision course. Left full rudder!
control! Shoot it out when we get back up. The boat's making some funny sounds, Mr. Shane. Yeah, she's Captain Gilmore, Ensign William, Fireman Kelly were lost in the action just completed. I can't presume to say what's in all our hearts. All right, we've got a lot of damage to repair. Let's get to it. The terribly damaged growler limped slowly towards home with the help of air protection. The bow had been bent at right angles to port, and it took the combined effort of every man on board to bring her in. To Commander Howard W. Gilmore went the first Congressional Medal of Honor awarded a submariner. For distinguished gallantry and valor, above and beyond the call of duty. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. We have with us Captain Arnold F. Shade, the executive officer who succeeded to command of the Growler during her fourth patrol. Arnie, when I look at the pictures of the Growler's condition after her collision with that Japanese gunboat, I'm amazed that you and your crew were able to bring her to port. Well, it not only looked bad, Tommy, it was. As you can see, the bow was bent almost 90 degrees to port. We had to carry lots of rudder all the way to prevent her from running in circles. It took three months to put a new bow on and to make that boat ready for service again, didn't it? That's right. But no matter what our achievement in bringing the Growler home, it pales to insignificance compared with Commander Gilmore's in saving all of us. You're referring to the ramming of the gunboat? Yes. The captain's quick action in calling for a sudden turn put the enemy in front of us and saved us from being rammed by him. It is a tradition that the captain leaves the bridge last, no matter what the danger. In the posthumous citation accompanying Commander Gilmore's Medal of Honor are these words. In the terrific fire of the gunboat's heavy machine guns, Commander Gilmore, refusing safety for himself, remained on deck while his men preceded him below. Arnie, our deep thanks for your assistance in helping us to tell this story. It's been my pleasure, Tommy. This picture is another memorial to those who gave their lives that day on the Growler. Ironically enough, Gilmore's prophecy spoken at the launching of the Growler proved true. On November the 8th, 1944, while on patrol in the South China Sea, the Growler was lost with all hands. We hope you will be with us again when we will bring you another true story from the history of the silent service. Go down, down, go down.
down, down, down to beat the ocean. There is man for fighting down in the deep blue underneath the sea.